Okay, so we've just acquired our new power plant for Project Rowdy, the 1979 Jeep CJ7 Restore. This is a 5.3 liter GM motor out of a 2001 Chevy Silverado pickup truck. It's got about 180,000 miles on it. I bought it specifically about that many miles because I'm planning on rebuilding this. Um, interesting that this is considered a full pullout. I'm extremely happy with what we got so far. It came with everything. It's got the complete wiring harness, the ECU. Uh, actually came with the fuse block. Now I'm not going to need the fuse block, so I'll take that off, uh, put it to the side, whatever, but it came with the starter. Um, this is a drive-by cable operated uh, uh, intake, so um, I'm actually going to like that, I think, on the Jeep. I'm not looking for anything fancy. That's actually going to make it a little bit easier. Um, you know, the 5.3 liters, GM never put a manual transmission behind there, so this engine has a flex plate on it. I'm going to take that flex plate off and convert that over to a flywheel. I've already got that all worked out. We'll go through the details later as, as we put that together. Uh, I currently just cherry picked this out of my truck and I'm, I've got it mounted on an uh, engine stand. About to lower it there and get that settled down. Um, the basis of this install, of this build, is we're going to tear this completely down. I've got a machine shop ready to, to work with me and um, we're going to completely rebuild this motor. I'm, I'm going to rebuild this motor almost identical stock except I'm going to put just a mild cam in it uh, to give it a little bit of lope. I want it to kind of sound like I, what I currently have in, in Rowdy right now. So we'll put, the only modification will be the well, cam and with the cam you know, it's going to have to uh, upgrade some of the springs. So we'll be doing that as well. I'll go through all those details over the next several videos. Um, but one of the key parts about this project again is is I'm very interested in how this thing comes apart and goes together. I've rebuilt two motors before. I've rebuilt the engine that's currently in Rowdy, the 304 V8, and I've also built a 350 for a buddy of mine in his for, for an old pickup truck. So I've got a little bit of engine rebuild experience. I'm not a professional at all, um, but I can easily follow directions. And I know I'm a consultant as a, as a profession, and, and I, while I don't know all the answers, I know where to get the answers. So I can, I'll figure out how to get this done. It's going to be really neat, really fun. I'm going to videotape everything I do so that I've got a backup on how things came apart so now I put things back together. What I hope to do for you as a viewer is I'm going to edit a lot of the chit chat out. I'm not going to include all the crap. Um, I'll do a really good job editing, narrowing this thing down. I'll speed through all the things that are repetitive uh, to make it a little more enjoyable for you. But uh, I'm really excited about seeing how the differences between this engine and those previous engines that I've rebuilt, number one. Number two, I'm excited because I've got two teenage, older teenage boys that are very excited learning how to do this. So they're going to be a very big part of this, of this rebuild um, because they, uh, they showed interest in knowing how engines work. So they're going to be part of that. With that, what that means is it's going to take me a little bit longer to do it because I'm going to have to make sure I have their availability. I'm not going to try and do things when they're not here. I don't want them to miss anything. So not only is this a, the LM7, but, I, but specifically M7 came with two different heads. It came with a 706 and it came with the 862. These are the 862 heads. There's a little plate right on the side of the head right here and it's got, it says 862 on it. And uh, I specifically didn't want the 706. I used to have a 2001 Tahoe and it had a lot of problems. Uh, specifically the heads, and that's that was one of the weak part of those heads is they, they crack. But these are the better heads, so if you're going to get an LM7, make sure it's got the A62 head. Um, that'll work better for you. So anyway, we're going to move on by start by labeling every one of these electrical connections. We're going to label the connection, then we're going to disconnect it. And as soon as we can, we'll get this whole wiring harness off this engine. So that's where we're going to start. Stay tuned. To get off that darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too When you want to get
Look at this. Yeah, there's the there's uh, the actual connection. And see there. when this is pushed down, it won't let, won't let it, it come back. So you just gotta pull it up and then yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So let's tuck that back in Okay, now we got that wiring harness off. We're gonna we're gonna get to all these coil packs and spark plug things off. So let's get this stuff off. So Yeah, where did it? Right here. It was the nut, and then there was that bracket, and then. I tell you what, put it back up there. I've got a picture. Just hang, hold, put it, hold it where it was. Put it down on there. About that. Okay. And like how this has that extra stud? Yeah. It was. This was on there, and then the bracket, and then the nut. Okay. Okay. Right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna focus on getting this whole all the front accessory stuff off. Start by let's get this fan off.
All right, we got that wiring harness completely removed as well as all the front accessories off the front of this engine. Um, pretty quick going, a uh, little time consuming on the engine harness because we wanted to label each of the wires, make sure we knew which sensors all those wires went to and what the plugs were and physical location. We came up with a little system how to identify where on the engine that uh, that plug would be. But the interesting thing, there's a lot of, lot of sensors on this motor and while I know well, what most of those do, I really wasn't familiar with what, what location they were in, so I kind of learned that while we pulled that off, and I thought I'd give a quick review of those sensors and where those are located. Again, this is a LM7 5.3 liter, kind of a typical truck engine, and uh, you'll find your sensors basically in the same locations. Basically, the only thing that's going to be different, these truck engines have that real tall intake, and um, for instance, the cam position sensors in the back of that, we'll see that in a minute, whereas some of the uh, LS... 6s or LS2s I believe have the cam position sensor there in the timing cover. So they, they move the stuff around but um, you'll need to be familiar with what that stuff is. So let's start down here on the passenger side of this engine in the bottom in the oil pan this is the oil level sensor. I believe that just basically runs the dummy light in the dash tells you your oil is low. Above that in the block is the crank shaft position sensor this tells the computer uh, the rotation of the what rotation the crankshaft is in, so it knows what where your pistons are, so it knows how to apply spark and in, uh, in your timing. Um, because mine is black, I know that this engine has a 24x reluctor in it. If this was gray, then my engine would have a 58x reluctor. And so now let's move on to the fuel injectors. If we move up on the, again on the passenger side. Cylinders two, four, six, and eight. We got fuel injectors here, 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 and here. And um, those will that has basically its own little harness. We would wire that pretty good. And then if we move over to the throttle body, the front of the engine, we have a throttle body. And this throttle body comes in two styles. They have a, a, a what they call drive-by cable, which is what this is, or drive-by wire. Because ours is a drive-by cable, my foot on the accelerator pedal is going to basically open and close this thing. The computer needs to know how far this is open. So it has what's called a throttle position center sensor, or TPS. That's located here on this side. Here's your TPS. This is the IAC, the uh, intake air control. I believe this has to do with stall and, and low idle and basically allows the computer to actually adjust a little more of the air as um, since, since I'm mechanically doing it, it, the computer can actually make small adjustments to that as well. This is part of the EVAP system. This is a solenoid. It basically does uh, some evaporative gases back into the gas tank. Over on this side of the head, this is the, the, the driver's head. In the front we have the coolant temperature sensor. That's pretty important. It sends information to the computer and that, that has a lot to do with timing and all the fuel maps and stuff. How it, you know, As the engine's cold, it runs a lot different than when it's, in, when it's warm. So it uses that not only to tell you maybe you're overheating, but, but more importantly how to uh, do fuel management. Alright, we got several more sensors here located closer to the back of the engine, so let's start there. Actually, let's move up to the top of the intake. We have our MAP sensor, MAP, Manifold Air Pressure, as well as this is an extension co a cable that goes down underneath the intake and it connects to two knock sensors that are located directly below the intake. Because those are so hard to get to, I am going to replace those knock sensors as well as this cable during the rebuild so that I don't have to deal with that later if something fails. But all these other ones, I'm actually just going to reuse the existing ones. They fail. They're, they're easy, accessible, and can be uh, replaced. So there's those two sensor positions. Here is the, uh, th these are actually, uh, these two are mounted into the block itself. This is the oil pressure sensor, and this is the camshaft position sensor. In addition to that, we have a O2 sensor here in the exhaust pipe on uh, the driver's side, and then the passenger side, they actually took it, uh, disassembled it here, so I didn't get that one. I'll have to buy that one additionally. So that's a pretty good overview. Those, that's all the little sensors that I disconnected when we took off the wiring harness, and uh, I got those all documented now, so I'll know how to make sure I get all that stuff put back properly. And uh, we'll start moving on. Uh, next, we're going to actually start tearing apart this engine. I've got a book that I'm going to follow, and it's got you know steps. We're going to follow those steps and just go through that and process. So I wanted to take a quick opportunity just to give a shout out uh, for a mail call that I got from Michael over at Montana Low Gear. Uh, you need to go check out his channel. 
he's I found him about six or seven months ago where he's doing a 5.9 liter Magnum V8 swap into a TJ. And while that has nothing to do with directly with my project, the problems that he had to solve and the approach that he took is very similar to everything that I'm going to have to do on my project. So his videos were all very re relative. So Michael, I appreciate all the conversations that we've had over the past several months. Uh, really do enjoy your channel. He's about to start a, a Skylark project, so he's, he's still got more you know, car work going on. So you might want to swing over and check out his channel. I'm sure he'd enjoy that. And uh, tell him I said hello. Jack it up.